To achieve great things in life, you'll need people to buy into your vision. Heed this timeless advice from personal development and leadership icon, Jim Rohn. The more things change, the more they stay the same. In 2024, just as it was in 2020 or 1920, leadership is a great challenge. It will continue to be among the greatest challenges of the future. Let's begin by recognizing one of the most challenging leadership roles, parenting. Unless we take our children by the hand and strengthen the family foundation, the nation is shaky. Parenting is where it all begins. My father had a simple little rule. He said, son, if you get in trouble in school, when you get home, it's double trouble. Does that method sound familiar? Double trouble at home if you get in trouble at school. A lot of parents are hoping someone else will exercise the leadership role, teachers, the church, the school, or the community. They want somebody else to take up the task of being the example. But this is a challenge for parents to take up themselves, to become leaders. Leadership is the noble challenge of transcending mediocrity. Consider the story of Abraham Lincoln. As his mother lay on her deathbed, her final words to him were, be somebody, Abe. If that story holds, Lincoln took those words to heart. To be somebody is to be more than just another face in the crowd. It's about becoming wise, strong, and kind. Leadership demands that we rise to this challenge, embracing the unique attributes it requires. Being somebody isn't about curating a persona on Instagram. It's not about putting on a show for others. True leadership begins with becoming. It's about growing into a new level of responsibility and opportunity. Why settle for anything less than an extraordinary life built on responsibility and opportunity? If you aim for greatness, you wouldn't want it any other way. There's a transformative approach to leadership known as leadership by invitation. This isn't leadership by threat, aggravation, or intimidation, which merely reflects weakness and ego. Instead, it's about inviting others to join you in a better way of doing things. Leadership by invitation is also leadership by inspiration. Inspire others to make the changes necessary to rise to new heights and achieve their goals. All leaders must first understand and master the fundamental laws of leadership. These laws aren't just theoretical concepts. They are essential principles that can be applied in real world scenarios to drive productivity and effectiveness. By grasping these foundational laws, leaders equip themselves with the tools needed to inspire, guide, and influence their teams. These laws of leadership serve not only as a framework for personal development, but also as practical illustrations that can be shared with others. They provide a roadmap for navigating the complexities of leadership roles and responsibilities. For example, understanding the law of influence, how your actions and decisions impact those around you, helps leaders demonstrate effective strategies and set a positive example. Moreover, these principles enhance productivity by offering clear, actionable guidelines. Leaders who integrate these laws into their daily routines can streamline their processes, make informed decisions, and foster a culture of excellence within their organizations. They learn to harness these laws to motivate their teams, drive performance, and achieve organizational goals. The law of sowing and reaping is a fundamental principle that underscores the essence of cause and effect in our lives. Simply put, whatever you sow, you will reap. To reap a harvest, you must first sow the seeds. In life, you must master one of two paths, planting seeds with care in the spring or begging for results in the fall. To earn a rich harvest, you must diligently plant the seeds, nurture them through the growing season, and harvest them with precision. Here's the core of the law of sowing and reaping. If you sow good, you reap good. If you sow bad, you reap bad. You cannot sow seeds of negativity and expect positive outcomes, just as you cannot plant weeds and hope for a garden of flowers. This law operates equally in both positive and negative contexts. Furthermore, it's crucial to understand that you don't merely reap what you sow, you reap far more than what you plant. This is a key aspect of the law. The old prophet wisely noted, if you sow the wind, you don't reap wind, you reap a whirlwind. This illustrates that the returns on your efforts can be significantly greater than the initial investment. For example, if you plant a cup of corn, you don't just get back a cup, you receive a bushel. 
The principle of sowing and reaping is fundamentally about increasing, receiving more than you put in. However, it's important to acknowledge that the law of sowing and reaping doesn't always play out as expected. Sometimes, despite diligent planting and careful nurturing, unforeseen events can thwart your efforts. A farmer may sow his crops in the spring and tend them faithfully through the summer, only to be devastated by a hailstorm that destroys the entire yield. In such cases, the anticipated harvest is lost. So what should the farmer do when faced with such a setback? He must decide whether to plant again. Even after a complete loss, the wise choice is often to continue planting in the next spring. Although there are no guarantees, the odds are in favor of a successful harvest if one persists. The principle remains true. While there are no certainties, the practice of sowing with hope and diligence often leads to future success. The law of averages is a powerful principle that reveals how consistent effort can lead to predictable results. Simply put, if you engage in an activity often enough, you'll establish a ratio of success to failure. Understanding this law can open doors to success in nearly any endeavor. Imagine you're starting in sales. You approach 10 people and one of them decides to buy your product. This initial result sets the stage for your ratio. Out of every 10 people you speak to, you might expect one to say yes. At first glance, this might seem unimpressive, but the key is recognizing that this ratio is just the beginning. The law of averages indicates that once you establish this ratio, it tends to persist. If you talk to 10 people and get one sale, the chances are high that if you talk to another 10, you'll secure another sale. You don't need to be perfect. You only need to grasp and leverage the law of averages. Even if your initial success rate is low, say one out of 10, you're on the right path. As you gain experience and improve your skills, your ratio can improve dramatically. If you're experienced and can close nine out of 10, a novice with a lower success rate can still be competitive. For instance, in a 30 day or 60 day contest, while you might secure nine sales out of 10 attempts, the newcomer by talking to a larger number of prospects, say 100, might still achieve 10 sales, thereby winning the contest. It's a clever use of numbers to overcome initial skill gaps. When starting, compensate for lack of skill with sheer numbers. As your skills develop, you'll find that you no longer need to make 100 calls to get 10 sales. The law of averages works in your favor by creating a pattern of success through consistent effort. This principle is invaluable, not only in sales, but across various career paths. Embrace it, and you'll find that your efforts lead to predictable, rewarding outcomes. The law of faith is a transformative principle that enables us to envision and create a reality beyond what currently exists. Faith is not just about believing in what is already there. It's about seeing potential and turning challenges into positive outcomes. Here's a deeper look into the key aspects of this law. One, see it as it is. Faith begins with a clear-eyed view of reality. It acknowledges the present state of affairs, no matter how grim. Faith doesn't shy away from the negative. Rather, it embraces it because acknowledging the current situation is the first step toward transformation. If things are difficult, recognize that they are difficult. If it's a mess, admit it's a mess. This honest appraisal is the foundation of true faith. Two, see it better than it is. Once you've acknowledged the current state, faith shifts to a higher gear, seeing the situation as it could be. This means looking beyond today's problems and imagining a better future. Humans possess a remarkable ability to dream and envision improvements. Faith empowers you to visualize a more favorable outcome, to plan and to dream beyond the present constraints. Three, make it better than it is. The true power of faith comes from action. It's not enough to just see a better future. You must actively work towards making it a reality. Faith must be invested in actions that will improve the situation. By taking deliberate steps, you can transform what is into what it can become. This is where faith turns into tangible progress. Four, don't see it worse than it is. One pitfall in the early stages of faith is exaggerating the negatives. Avoid blowing the situation out of proportion. Acknowledge the reality without inflating it. If things are bad, they are bad. No need to multiply that badness. Keep your perspective grounded to avoid unnecessary despair. 
Five, don't see it for more than it can become. Faith should be realistic. There's a fine line between visionary faith and folly. It's possible to aspire to great achievements, but it's crucial to understand that such aspirations require time and effort. You might envision becoming wealthy, but not overnight. True faith involves setting ambitious yet achievable goals and working towards them systematically. Six, it might be worse than when you first see it. Sometimes initial observations can be misleading. What you see on the surface may not represent the full picture. Be prepared for deeper issues that may emerge. This doesn't mean you should be disheartened, but rather approach the situation with a thorough understanding of its complexities. Seven, it might be far more in the future. Recognize that the realization of your vision might be further off than initially apparent. If visibility is limited, focus on the immediate steps you can take. As you progress, your view will expand, revealing more opportunities and paths forward. Patience is a crucial component of faith. So take the early steps of faith. Whatever you can see as possible to become, start believing that, have faith in that. As that starts to take hold, you'll be able to see it for more and more and for more, and the possibilities will start to increase in your imagination. In life and leadership, the principle of working with those who deserve it rather than just those who need it is crucial. The reality is that life operates based on merit, and this principle should guide how you allocate your time and resources. Set objectives and determine who deserves it. Start by establishing clear objectives and guidelines. When you bring someone into your team or enterprise, lay down the rules and expectations from the outset. Monitor their performance and accomplishments to assess who genuinely deserves your support and resources. This approach ensures that your efforts are directed towards those who contribute meaningfully. The 80-20 rule, often, the people who are most vocal about needing help are not necessarily the ones who deserve it. According to the 80-20 rule, the majority of your time and energy might be pulled in the wrong direction towards those who need assistance rather than those who have earned it. While there are many areas where your benevolence can make a difference, in your professional sphere, focus on those who meet your established criteria of deservingness. Teach people how to deserve it. A transformative approach is to teach individuals how to earn their place and your support. By helping people transition from a mindset of need to one of deserving, you can significantly boost their self-esteem. This boost in self-esteem can be exhilarating, especially for those who have been struggling with self-worth. As they begin to see their value and capabilities, their actions become more proactive and results-oriented the cycle of self-esteem and progress. Once individuals start to believe in their worth, this newfound self-esteem drives them to take action. This action leads to progress, and progress often brings success and fortune. Therefore, investing in teaching people how to deserve your support not only benefits them, but also accelerates their personal and professional growth. In summary, focus your efforts on those who have proven themselves worthy of your attention and resources. Teach others how to earn their way to your support, fostering a culture of merit and self-improvement. This approach not only enhances individual self-esteem, but also promotes a cycle of action, progress, and success within your team or organization. When it comes to leadership and personal growth, remember this simple truth. Don't expect a pear tree to bear apples. Each individual has their unique capabilities and potential. Your role is not to force people into a mold, but to allow them the space to grow and evolve at their own pace. Encourage them to do what they can and let them change their minds along the way. This process of growth and development is natural and essential. Understand that you cannot change people directly. True change must come from within. The most you can do is to inspire, educate, and provide support. Deliver your message with clarity and enthusiasm, hoping that it resonates with those who are ready to embrace it. Your influence can spark the initial steps towards change, but the journey must be undertaken by them. Celebrate every bit of progress, no matter how small. Offer rewards, praise, and encouragement. Let them know that even the smallest steps are significant. For example, if someone has taken two steps towards their goal, reassure them that these initial steps are a sign of great things to come. Remind them that if they can manage two steps, 
they are fully capable of taking a hundred more. Lead by example and invite them to join you on the path forward. As they see your progress and commitment, they will be inspired to follow suit. Your journey becomes a beacon of possibility, motivating them to take their steps toward growth and success. In leadership and personal growth, remember that you can't force change on others. Each person has their potential and path. Your job is to inspire and support them as they grow. Celebrate every small victory and show by example how dedication pays off. Don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Help others become better by encouraging their progress and leading with your example. By doing this, you create an environment where everyone can thrive and reach their full potential.